Here we're going to do some problems where we already know what the atomic mass of an element is. And we have to figure out what the percent abundance of various isotopes of that element are. Here's a typical question. There are two stable isotopes of chlorine, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. I put this in visual form for you. So here are the two atoms, and here are the masses, 34.97 AMU and 36.97 AMU, of these two isotopes. If the relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.45 AMU, so like that's what it is for the element itself, what is the abundance of each of these isotopes? So in other words, what we're solving for is what's the percent abundance of this one and what's the percent abundance of this one? They're both unknowns right now. So how are we going to go about solving the problem? Since these are unknowns, the first thing let's do is assign some variables to them. Chlorine 35, just for the sake of it, let's call that x. The, uh, the percent abundance of it will be x. What about chlorine 37? Well, we could say that it's y, but that would be a pain because then we'd have two variables to solve for, x and y, and that would make things much more difficult. What we really want to be able to do is express chlorine 37's abundance using x in some way. Let me show you how we're going to do it. I want to show you just some random possible abundance values for these two isotopes just so you can see a pattern here and then we'll figure out how to solve for it, okay? Let's say just randomly that there could be, I don't know, 60% chlorine 35 and 40% chlorine 36 or if we express these as decimals, it would be 0.6 and 0.4. Or there could be 25% chlorine 35 and 75% chlorine 37. There are the decimals, 0.25 and 0.75. Or we could have 80% chlorine 35, 20% chlorine 37. Again, I'm just making these up. Then we have 0.8 and 0.2. Do you see the pattern going on here? Because we only have two possible isotopes, for this problem, when, they, when we add the two of them together, they always have to come out to 100%. Or if we're expressing their abundances in decimals here, when we add the two abundances up, they have to come out to 1. We can use this to come up with an expression for chlorine 37. Here's the first thing that we've noticed. Chlorine 35 plus chlorine 37, when they're expressed as decimals, add them together, you'll always get 1. So we can just rearrange this equation here to solve for chlorine 37, and then we get chlorine 37 equals 1 minus the amount of chlorine 35 that we have. So chlorine 37 here is going to be 1 minus the amount of chlorine 35, which we are saying is x. So here are two variables x, the amount of chlorine 35, and 1 minus x for the amount of chlorine 37. Add the two amounts together and we're going to get 100% or we're going to get 1 if we're expressing them as decimals. So now we're ready to write an equation that sets these variables up. What's it going to look like? In order to do this, let's take a look at a related equation that we'd write when we want to find out the atomic mass and we already know the abundances of the isotopes we're starting with. Okay, here I got boron 10, I take its weight, 10 AMU, and I multiply it by its abundance as expressed as a decimal, and I do the same thing for boron 11, multiply it by its abundance expressed as a decimal. So I'm going to do that here, except we just already know the atomic mass. So let's start out with chlorine 35. Okay, I'll start out with its mass, just like we have the mass of boron 10 here. So the mass of chlorine 35 is 34.97 AMU. Down here, we multiply this by 0.2 because we know the percent, but for chlorine 35, it's just going to be x. We don't know it yet. So we take this, and now we move on to the second isotope. Here's the mass of boron. We're going to take the mass of chlorine 37, 367 and multiply that by the abundance. It's 0.8 here, and for chlorine 37, it's going to be 1 minus x.
So we add those two together, and unlike down here where we don't know the atomic mass, we already do know the atomic mass for chlorine, and that should be 35.45. Now we've set up our equation, and all we have to do is rearrange, multiply and divide a little bit, and we can solve for x. Let's do that. So I'm going to rewrite this, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute 36.97 between these parentheses. Okay, so I'm going to get 36.97 times 1 minus 36.97x equals 35.45. Now I have two x terms, this one and this one. So I'm going to do 34.97x minus 36.97x, and that's going to give me 2.00x, ah, oh, negative, uh, negative 2.00x plus 36.97 equals 35.45. Now I want to get rid of this from this side of the equation, so I'm going to, I'm going to subtract 36.97 here minus 36.97 here, and that is going to give me negative 2.00x equals negative 1.5. Two. These are both negative, so I can multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1 to make them both positive. So I'm going to get 2.00x equals 1.52. And for the very last step to actually solve for x, I'm going to do x equals 1.52 divided by 2.0. I've just divided both sides by 2.0. I'm going to move up here where I've got a little bit more room. And now I can finally say um, that x equals, these divided together, equals 0 0.760, or Cl35, because that's what x is after all, equals 76.0%. Okay, now let's do uh, the other part, which is chlorine 37. So that's going to be 1 minus x is going to turn out to be 0 0.24. Zero, and just multiply this by 100 to get the percent. I'm going to get chlorine 37's percentage equals 24.0%. Uh, so these are the two percentages that we were solving for. Just to review, the only really tricky thing that you got to do here is set one of them equal to x and one of them to 1 minus x. And just as we saw here, that's because when you add the two percentages or decimals together, you're going to get 100% or you're going to get 1 when expressed as decimals here. So we kind of took a while doing this problem, pausing along the way to look at how the math worked in various situations. So now let's do one more problem where we'll just go through it really fast, step by step, so you can be all ready to solve a problem like this if you see it on the homework or see it on a test. There are two naturally occurring isotopes of lithium, lithium-6 with a mass of 6.015 AMU, and lithium-7 with a mass of 7.016 AMU. What is the abundance of each? Okay, so we're going to be calculating abundance. There's one piece of information that we don't have that we need, and that is the atomic mass of lithium. How can we find it out? It's not given in the problem. We can look lithium up on the periodic table, and this number down here, 6.941, tells us the relative atomic mass for lithium. So that's the one other piece of the puzzle that we're going to need. Okay, so we got two things we're solving for here. Lithium-6. Lithium-6, let's make the abundance of that equal to x. And lithium-7, let's make the abundance of that equal to 1 minus x. Now we'll set up an equation that works with the abundances and the atomic mass. So we'll do the weight of lithium-6, or I should say the mass of lithium-6. You know, people use them interchangeably with this stuff. It doesn't really matter. 6.015 times x plus the mass of lithium-7, 7.016 7 times 1 minus x add these together and we should get the atomic mass of so 6.941 here. Okay, rewrite this. Distribute this number here, so 7.016 minus 7.016x equals 
141. I have my x terms here. I'm going to subtract this from this, and that is going to give me negative 1.001x plus 7.016 equals 6.941. Now to get x by itself, I'm going to subtract this from both sides of the equation. I'll get negative 1.001x equals negative 0.075. I'm going to just multiply both by uh, negative 1, turn that positive, and for the last step I will divide both sides by 1.001, which is not really going to do anything because it's so close to 1. It's going to be 0.075 divided by 1.001. All right, so now x over here equals 0.075. That's a decimal. To turn it to a percent, we multiply it by 100. So we're going to get 7.5%. And that is the amount of lithium-6 that we have. And then 1 minus x is going to be uh, 0.925. Or to turn that into a percentage, we multiply it by 100, and we get 92.5%. And that tells us the amount of lithium-7 that we have. So once again, the only really tricky thing was that we had to set one of these isotopes equal to x, and the other we set to 1 minus x. Then we work through the math. And you want to obviously remember to take these decimals that you get at the end and turn them into percentages by multiplying by 100.